Greetings, Jedi traders. David here of tradingfibs.com to bring you the daily trend for week 23, day five. It is Friday, June 9th, 2017. Hey, as always, please seek financial advisement when trading with your money, as these videos are for educational purposes only. Support your knowledge in the market. See what's going through my head on any given day. Always make sure you have a solid trading plan and always manage your stop when placing a trade. All right. Uh, greetings, Jedi traders. Good to see you here. End of the week. What a week it's been. I got my special surfing shirt on for you today. Surfboard shirt. And I'll explain here in a minute exactly why that was appropriate for today. But there it is. You wouldn't believe it. Why am I giving day, 20, uh, day 5, week 23, actually tapping the all record highs? Because it's exactly what the market did today. All three indices tapping the record highs today. But that's not how the day ended, did it? If you're watching the market today, you would have known exactly what I'm talking about. Big time divergence all around as the NQ was down. ESYM going nowhere. And they're actually, I should say, they're rallying up. Uh, but NQ not playing the game. And so pre-European uh, pre close there, uh, markets just take a dive there on the NQ. And that was it for the NQ for the rest of the day. Sell, sell, sell all the way down and riding the trend. That's right. Riding the surfboard all the way down. All right. So PM session, NQ continue to just sell off. YM barely moved, actually regaining the highs of the day. And the ES dragging along, not Closing off too far from the open, actually six uh, six points away from today's open. So a couple of key things out today. NQ closing out two downside gaps. Volume again. Check it out here. It was all about the Fang stocks today. Again, rumor out there. Maybe it's just the fact that markets just needed to sell at some point. We've been pretty much upside. We're coming to the end of the June quarter summertime trading. And take a look at the volume. I mean, take a look at the ES. Not only on the June contract and but September contract putting over three million and the NQ putting us over a million, so really split both uh, charts running very much in sync today. Nice movement on either. Usually being Friday right before uh, contract expiration week, you usually shift to the new contract. But today, great uh, reason to stay in either one. They both had great movement again. Little flash crash there towards the end of the session, bang, all the way down and turned itself all the way up, running back up 70 points. So big moves on both sides today. So even counter trenders probably getting a move there as well. VIX, interesting enough, closing out here in the high uh, tens, but uh, nowhere up near 13, 14, 50 for a move like down today. Strange on the charts. We'll see that. Here in the moment, so uh, in a moment. So uh, anyway, there it is. UK vote out, not as expected, but again, uh, still some finagling there over in the England. That uh, they'll have to figure out how to balance their power. Anyway, big trend over here, major uptrend overnight, and the drop on the NQ only to pop back upside. NQ, it wasn't sure. until the late afternoon that ES and YM finally decide to play along a little bit. All right, let's get right into the uh, charts here, uh, market internals, and then pick out some of the key highlights today. It was all about the crew, not crew today. It was all about the NQ today on the trend. Uh, let's take a look at market profile here. This is the September contract on a four-hour, on, um, on a daily chart here, 405 minutes. Again, not a lot of single prints downside. So at some point, we know that on market profile, price action will come back down. Uh, and repair the lower levels here as 70% uh, of today's trading took place from 58.40 down to around 56.80. ES, same picture, but again, now we have a weak high up here, so ES will eventually come up here and repair the upper extremes. Taking a look at the daily gaps all around. Actually, let's pull out some of those daily gaps as uh, the pictures uh, showed exactly price action playing out. There was your NQ making a new all-time high this morning. Hadn't labeled the new all-time high yet. There it was. It was the call. 58.23 was the first level we were looking at at the open gaps. Finally, when price action started to move down here on the next move, uh, as the NQ here on a daily bar started to break, at this point on the range chart, going to the higher time frame was the best opportunity to remain in the trend and sure enough as price action moved down i believe i caught that there was downside gap touch and actually as you just saw 
on the pictures, we closed it out. So as I say, and if you follow me enough, what do I say all the time? With 100% guarantee, downside gaps, upside gaps, 100% will all eventually be closed. And that's exactly what the NQ did. So we got two dashes there. We're going to close it out, which leaves us, that's right, these down arrows, which leaves these out. Next open gap all the way down. 55, 12, 20, 2, 4, 8, and 23, 15, 75. Big drop there. Eventually it will come. I'm not saying it will happen next week, but you got to keep that in mind. They are there and they are exposed and we have more even to the downside. So are the perma, are the perma bears coming out? Possibly. They'll tell you so. Jim Rogers sure felt like it was after retweeting his post here today of doom and gloom, but just watch the charts in front of you and you'll see the momentum. We'll show that to you here on the charts in a moment. They're the AD lines, another market internal that I watch here. Price action again, uh, surprisingly on the NQ, as market action continued to move downside, including the tick count, was actually majority in the positive today. But price A got to follow chart price action. NQ as it meandered its way down here. And finally, that outlier, there it is. I mentioned it week after week. Negative 70. And sure enough, what did it do? After you rode the trend down, it popped right there. It was that last push and bang, buy action. Uh, buy orders just kicked right in and that market just swept right up. So, all right. So uh, market internals uh, on the ES here was, uh, again, uh, the ES faring a little bit better to the upside today. But again, a lot of action there on the tick, card, but, uh, tick chart. But you could see the cumulative index here on the ES looked the same on the NQ, surprisingly enough to the upside. All right, got a lot of charts to go through. I want to play it out uh, as the day did, but let's go. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull up some of the mor morning charts again. Six uh, six six uh, J and the GC were already in the downtrend. Nice move on the uh, Globex here as the uh, six J was downside. So opening up the charts this morning, taking a look at market trend already downside. The strategy of that's right, looking for price action either above or below the cloud, looking for price action, moving average crossover to supplement, but in sync with the 534 and the 5144 gives you an opportunity for high probability setup. And so there it was, both indices, um, I'm sorry, both charts, both markets in trend, but focusing eventually on the market opening and it was the ES after a nice Globex. Remember we said the Globex run, nice move uptrend. It was the ES on a smaller time frame, 5.4 Flex Renko. There it is, market open, already in trend. Moving average crossover, it's 5.34 in sync, 51.44 in sync, that's the third bar. You had a small pullback, maybe stopped you out on trade management, totally understandable. If you're able to keep the stop further back, you managed to stay in the trend. There it was, continue. A couple, couple of tails down, didn't make it for any close trailing stop to keep you in, but trend was up, moving averages were up, keeps you in the trend, HA bars, all you need to indicate that up move. All right, there we are, post one hour on the ES, taking a look at any other ES charts today. Uh, we had post mid session, there it was after that nice move up and price action pulls back after a little bit of consolidation here at the highs, making that all time high on the ES. Price action downside move, again, Highest probability setup would have been if all the charts were in the red, which happened down here towards the first part of the afternoon. But mid-session here as market action started to pull back here. You got the moving averages crossover, price action underneath the cloud. That's good enough for the first ES move. Didn't take you out on the stop if you kept it at the break even. But if you trailed down, sure enough, a good trade management would have stopped you out down here at the lows and given you another opportunity on the ES to the downside. And the ES just continued uh, to move down one trend after another on the 5-4 Flex Renko, eventually uh, catching up why I'm not moving as much. And then what do you know? Throw on an MML chart, Marie Math Levels, and there exactly bounce at the low off the five minute chart, reverse and back upside. Nice supplement, complementary uh, to find the lowest low on the charts on the MML levels to find where the bounce again. Uh, this to me is a counter trend move, but What's in your uh, favor here is the fact that the moving average is crossed over. They're both in trend. I don't have one in white, one in red. Red meaning downside, white here, upside. 
Solid hike in Ashi bars, and in sync with the 534, it gives you the nice counter trend move. So nice move on the ES. All right, let's go back to the NQ, as that really was the superstar of the day. NQ AM session by the MML levels, doing really well uh, as price action started to get going here. Again, like I said, NQ had a rough time uh, getting going in the morning as uh, the, YM and the, uh, the YM and the ES were heading upside. So a couple of pockets of intraday uh, trend here. Again, the highest probability setup was right here. Uh, didn't last very long, and that was it from the NQ as uh, really never looked back. Uh, eventually turned back downside here on the NQ and trending mid-session. Here we are after the European close, the turnaround. We're still on a 10.7 flex Renko. Again, we were looking for those open gaps downside at this point as the NQ closed out its gap and continuing downside. We then eventually turned to our, our higher time frame. We went to a 15 tick chart to keep you in the trend. As you can remember, the higher, the lower time frame is going to give you a lot of noise on some of these bars, but the higher time frame, check it out. Indecision bar, indecision bar, an opportunity to bring the stop. Indecision. And again, it's just a choice. If you're trading on the 10 7 and you trade move your stop down you get stopped out you look for the next opportunity but go to the higher time frame 15 tick and then eventually here on a smaller time frame we started and again you could see the lot of noise down here versus the chart that i just showed you which has the higher time frame keep it on the lower time frame always possibly looking for the counter trend and i wanted to point this out is that when you're looking for and definitely there were bottom feeders looking for the price action to move back upside but it just kept selling. So what does that look like? Both moving averages upside. You don't see that in any previous move here. You see the moving average crossover and you see the charts in sync 534. That is the counter trend move. And that's what you'd be looking for. Did it hold? Not today, but you might've gotten at least maybe 10 ticks. Maybe you got a scalp out of it. Maybe you got your stop to break even and it didn't hold as price actually came back down. But that's what you want to be looking for, especially at the lows. All right, so what happened? Price action on, as we mentioned, continued to move downside. Now we're chasing the lower gap. So it was all about the NQ. Next move down. We're now here on the 20 tick range chart. We're upping the ante, uh, not upping the ante, but we're looking to ride the trend, ride the wave. But we got to go to the even the higher time frame if we really want to stay in. Again, small pullback here. If you remember, just before I showed you the 15 tick chart, now that 15 tick chart to a 20 doesn't show that even those, those small pullbacks just shows the long tail. So opportunity always best to go to the higher time frame when you're in a deep sell off or in an uptrend as well. Both, uh, both charts work in both directions. All right, NQ eventually uh, found its way down here on the uh, NQ next move down. Again, we had another opportunity for a counter trade. I wanted to point that out just like we had before. Same setup uh, here on a 10 tick range chart, but uh, that's the ES. NQ just wouldn't have it. So 20 tick range chart continuing downside. Again, that AM session move now looks very small in comparison, but you're riding the big train down. You're riding the big trend down and the train choo-choo downside. Little pullbacks, opportunities to move the stop, opportunities to move the stop. And NQ continues downside, and there it is. 57.34.50 50 was that second open gap downside, but the NQ decided uh, it wanted more as the NQAD line, that's right, the NQAD line continued, hit that negative 70, and after that, it was bouncing back upside as we saw on the NQ uh, off the lows here and bouncing 70 points back upside. I mean, big range today up back into the cloud and just not able to move any higher than the 144 EMA. All right, again, I wanted to show you again a lot of those opportunities on the time frames. Here is, again, this is even a higher time frame. This is a 2517, but again, let me just show you. We'll go back to the 1017 years. The NQ really had the highest probability setups. You know, at some point, you're, these were very quick moves. Again, you saw this move all occurred here. Check out the time frame. 14, 249, 13, all the way down to 249.51. So in a matter of seconds, this thing was already downside. If you hit and you got filled, awesome. But all of a sudden, the buy order just kicked right in, and this just went right back upside. So looks great at the end of the day. But again, numerous opportunities. 
Again, some uh, traders looking for the counter trend, but a lot of setups. When you start seeing a lot of setups like these, either I mentioned stay out or simply go to the higher time frame. Start with a 15 tick. It's just like if you trade off a minute chart and it's too noisy, go to a three minute chart, go to a five minute chart. All of a sudden you start eliminating some of the noise. You can see already here, we've gotten rid of some of that heavy price action uh, off a 15 tick. And then we go to a 20 tick chart, all of a sudden a lot easier to see the trending day and to manage each of these opportunities at the swing positions is an opportunity to move your stop. And sometimes it's uh, tough to remember that, especially when uh, you're wanting to capture as many ticks as possible, but the strategy stays the same. And you can see every single move down, every single one of these moved down was, didn't take out the former uh, swing uh, position. And, and the opportunity was there. I'm not saying I did that. There were plenty of ticks to be made today, but if you are able to move to that higher time frame and capture those moves, uh, and switch to the higher time frame soon enough, then you could be able to move your stop down efficiently. And once you get down here, again, you're looking, uh, I'm not saying you got out at the lows, perhaps your stop was here, and this is exactly what where you got uh, tailed out. So NQ, awesome move to the downside. All right, so ES, we finish off uh, the week here as price action found support off the MMLs. We did have an MML reset on the charts. But price action did bounce back upside, found support above the 10 period moving average as the uh, ES uh, finds uh, the momentum uh, to bounce back upside, but resistance here at the cloud. Sure enough, uh, the FANG stocks uh, perhaps having an effect here as money moved out of the uh, big five or big four of the NASDAQ and moved in. Look at those numbers today uh, coming downside, uh, finishing below 1,000. But here it was NQ and moving into the ES and YM stocks, still holding above uh, the 50 period moving average. At some point, I thought we were coming down and capture that 50 MA, but no go today. But we are now currently downtrend underneath the 10 period moving average, as we see here on a higher time frame. even can go to a probably a 50 tick range chart, but 20 tick downside today, 25 tick chart downside kept you in the bigger 10. Don't be afraid of the moves down. Uh, don't always be looking for the... Uh, a bottom but hey there's some traders that believe the trend's been so strong to the upside that that's all they're looking for each day and looking for the pop from the bottom back upside but pretty strong trend to ride downside on the nq today all right finishing up here on the ym as the uh, mml zone high here we did find there it is watch for that 10 period moving average that's your short term uh price action uh, support regardless of any other uh, line that you might be watching so that 10 ema uh, find support on the on the YM, and there it is. We bounce right back upside on the YM. Relentless uh, on the uh, ES and the YM to finish up way back upside versus the NQ, which uh, you know for some time has been a relentless leader on the indices. All right, uh, that uh, finishes up the uh, daily trend on the key futures markets uh, and the technical momentum of all the charts we watch here. Again, not much uh, to say on the GC today. A little bit of a move this morning. It was nice. 6J, again, we talked about the Globex move downside, but PM session got a little bit of a lift and uh, not too bad. Um, there is a question out there when it comes, and I, I plan on doing a upcoming tutorial video on exactly what are the bars that uh, we're looking at. Again, I just wanted to give a quick insight into the uh, chart, and again, we'll do a follow-up on a uh, video tutorial. But again, the Heiken Ashi bars, which are trend bars, when you combine it with what some of you may know is the Renko bar, and here we have the Flex Renko, you can see the difference already in the way the, uh, the the bars look. When you combine the HA bar with the Flex Renko, which is a variation of the Renko, this is what we get, the Heiken Ashi Flex Renko. And every day when I'm showing you my charts, it's exactly what we're looking at. Heiken Ashi Flex Renko charts, uh, candles uh, for that matter. All right, uh, again, covering, covering a lot, uh, guys. Um, Feel free to stop by at uh, my website here every day to find out more information, uh, tradingfibs.com, where each morning I post the pre-market trend, uh, where's the current MML levels, including each and individual trading session to recap. And on the weekends here, scrolling down, I do a week recap, which uh, highlights the charts of the day, including a link to all 
the weekday recaps if you uh, just want one place to go. And make sure you check out my Technical Momentum Outlook for week 24, which will be posted over the weekend and posted at See It Market as well as MrTopStep.com. Also, if you're interested in signing up, for the Infinity Futures Live Trading Challenge, I believe today's the last day, livetradingchallenge.com. Make sure you get there. Uh, lots of good information on this page. And if you're interested in, again, the long-term uh, discipline in setting up a trading plan as well as a simple strategy that you might find some of my charts supplemental for your trading plan, make sure you check out my Infinity Futures webinar post here located on June 7, 2017. All right, Jedi traders, uh, my trading mantra, one simple strategy, any market, any chart, any time frame will keep you disciplined. Uh, you can find me every day on Twitter here at Trading Fibs, uh, where I post my tweets, charts, and all the like. Again, you can go to the Daily Recap and find a lot of those charts there as well. Um, I keep my bias out of the market. I only watch the charts that are in front of me, and that's the most important thing. If you're interested in joining us, community of like-minded traders, feel free to uh, email me, David, at Trading Fibs. Uh, you can join us any Thursday or Friday to view live chart setups as they happen in the trading day. Make sure you check out my weekend video where I'll go over the uh, quick recap of the week and what we're looking ahead into next week as we roll into quad witching on next Friday. Till then... It is National Strawberry Rhubarb Pie Day, so enjoy yourselves. And until next time, have yourselves a Blue Zone Day wherever you may be. David from TradingFibs.com wishing you a good day, a good night, and good trading to you.